Here you have three equations that in some point in time, if you take chemistry or physics or more advanced algebra classes, you're going to run into these. And so it's a good idea to learn how to work with these equations as well. This is a, a simple kinematics equation in physics. Uh, here's something you might run into when you do a chemistry class, when you deal with gases and pressures and volumes and temperatures, gases. But again, you're not going to be able to solve the physics or the chemistry problems unless you know how to deal with the algebra. And I have seen a lot of times students that are very good in physics and chemistry, but they get hung up on the algebra portion of these courses. So let me show you some good examples of how to find the variable in a particular formula that kind of looks a little odd here. I threw this one in here because this will help us illustrate a very interesting concept when you're dealing with two fractions that equal to each other and how to deal with one of those. And actually, this is not all that different from that, and I'll show you in just a moment why I think that. All right, let's take a look at this one. Here I have the V1 that I'm looking for on the right side equation, so I'm simply going to turn the equation around and write it as V1t plus 1 half AT squared equals S. I like doing this because it doesn't require any uh, hard thinking, simply turn the equation around, nothing changes, and now I have the variable I'm looking for on the left side of the equation. Of course, I still have this term over here, the 1 half AT squared. doesn't have a V1 in it, so I'll move that to the right side. Again, when I move a single item to cross the equal sign, the sign changes, so this is V1T is equal to S minus 1 half AT squared. And finally, I want to get rid of the t, I want to isolate the v1, so I divide the left side by t, I divide the right side by t, and I get v1 equals, because the t's cancel out, s minus 1 half at squared over t. So not all that different from what we did before, but you can see I didn't have to worry about the 1 half because I was part of a, a group, a part of a term that I didn't need, so I just moved the whole thing over to the right, and the subscripts here, sometimes they confuse people. Begin, don't worry about the subscripts, just take them along and simply here v1 equals what we have on the right side. This thing right here is one of my personal favorites because it causes a lot of confusion among students and it actually is a really easy thing to, to work with as long as you realize something here. It turns out that we can move anything across the diagonal. So if I, I'm going to use a different color here. If I draw these diagonal lines like this, and I don't know if you can see that because this pen is kind of dead. Let me try this one and see if this one works. Ah, much better. There we go. Okay, I'm not crossing anything out here. I'm simply showing you that if you have one fraction set equal to another fraction, it allows you to move things across the diagonal without changing anything. In other words, I can move the D over here, I can move the C down there, I can move the V down there, and nothing has changed. So I can, I can write this as um, A times D by moving the D over here equals B times C by moving the B over there. So if I do that now, since I'm looking for the C and it's now on the right side of the equation over here, I can now simply flip the equation around. I can write this as BC is equal to A times D. And the last step, since I'm looking for C, I can divide the left side by B, my pen is dying, there we go, and I can write the, divide the right side by B, the B's cancel out, and now I have C is equal to A times D over B. So when you do this, it's really not that hard. Remember the trick, whenever you have a fraction is equal to a fraction, you can move things up and down along the diagonal. So I can write A down here, I can write the C down there, whatever I want to do. So now we come to this one that looks a lot more complicated than this one, but the principle is still the same. I can move things along the diagonal. So I'm looking for the T2. I can move the T2 over there. I can move the P1, V1 down here. I can move the T1 up here. And that will just simply solve the problem. Let's see. Move the T over here so the T2 goes to the upper left corner. That's along the diagonal. The P2, V2 are already here, so I'm going to leave those there. The P1, V1 are going to move across the diagonal down here. And the T1 is going to move across the diagonal this way. And problem solved. How about that? 
Now, there's other ways of doing this that would be much more difficult, but I would really recommend that when you have a problem like this, you simply just move things across the diagonal, and bingo, the problem is solved. I'll do this one again, but let's say this time we want to solve for V2. So that, let's rewrite this problem here. P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. Now notice what I could do since V2 is over here, and if I moved it, so let me draw an arrow here, right? If, um, if I want to solve, probably this might confuse you a little bit, so let me get rid of this. So I rewrote the same problem, but this time I want to solve for V2. Notice if I move the V2 across the diagonal, it ends up in the denominator, which is not a good thing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to flip the equation around. So I'm going to write this as P2 V2 over T2. Two. I say two and I write one, I do that more often. My brain sometimes gets ahead of me. Equals P1 V1 over T1. So in this particular case, since I realized that if I move the V2 across the diagonal over here, it's in the wrong place, it's in the denominator. And if I want to solve for it, it needs to be in the numerator. So before I do anything, I'm simply turning the equation around, flipping it over. Now I have V2 in the right place. So now all I have left to do is take the T2 and move it across the diagonal this way take the P2, move it across the diagonal this way, so I can write this as V2 equals, leave the ones that are already in the right place alone, such as P1, V1, move the T2 across, so this becomes T2 over here, divided by T1 in the denominator, it's already there, and then move the P2 down here, multiply times P2. Just like that. So as you can see, things that look rather complicated can be relatively easy to solve for a particular variable. All right, I hope this helps you deal with variables and formulas and how to solve for them.